Now we're going to introduce another great group of uh, animals. These are the segmented worms or the annelids. These include the common garden worms that we see in our soil, but the vast majority of these are marine worms and they're the segmented worms with, with appendages. And so again, we're gonna introduce this group and learn their features and know their phylogeny. So uh, these guys are also protostomes and lophotrochozoa. Okay, they don't have a lophophore per se, but they do show trochophore larvae. Uh, and so these annelids are closely related to the mollusks, but they're segmented um, and they appear quite different, but they are closely related and often not too far away from them. So this is, again, was originally based on the sequence of the 18S ribosomal RNA gene that led us to this. But after we started looking at this, we see lots of additional similarities. And annelids are also, like mollusks, very complex organisms. They have a complete digestive tract, respiratory structures called gills, a closed circulatory system with a heart, pumping blood with a respiratory pigment that moves through their body delivering oxygen. They have uh, excretory organs, again, like the mollusks. This is called a metanephridio, and they have some of these in each segment. Uh, and you can see the segments in these guys here. These have a ventral nerve cord and a brain that also is kind of loops around the pharynx, like many, many invertebrates. Okay, annelids show their relationships to the other lophotrochozoa. They are protostomes with spiral cleavage. They have a coelom, and in this case, it's a very large coelom that's uh, divided by septa and can be used as a hydrostatic skeleton. Their segmented bodies are both internally and externally segmented, and many times they'll have parapodia, paired appendages from each segment. These aren't jointed, they're fleshy appendages, but they can have chitinous hairs on them. These guys almost all show a true trochophore larvae, Again, organs and large active animals. The majority of these animals fall in the class Polychaeta. These are the marine worms. They have a distinct head with lots of parapodia with CT of chitin. Um, it's a, a organic material that contains sugar and some protein. These guys show their segmentation or metamerism very quite well. They have a distinct head with a uh, can, you know, appendages that may be uh, modified for piercing or feeding. Sometimes these are modified into fluffy appendages for trapping particles. Um, they have well-developed gills, are active. They're often referred to as tube worms because many of them have a habit of building a tube and then living within that tube. Okay, They are all marine, so a very, very diverse group of organisms. The Annelids that we probably know best fall into the class Oligochaeta, which means having few appendages or few setae. These are terrestrial and freshwater worms that we know. Some are quite small. They may go through the larval stage right in the egg, so you may not see a free-swimming trochophore, and this is common in um, many terrestrial organisms. They, too, have a ventral nerve cord that's doubled with uh, ganglia around the pharynx. The last group of these are the Hyrudinae. These are the leeches. They are mostly freshwater organisms that are parasites. And they have reduced segmentation, but a very good muscular system. And they produce anticoagulants and analgesic secretions so that they can numb their host while they're feeding and make sure that the blood flows. Okay, so a very large group of large active organisms, uh, complex, and so even though we consider them just worms, they're far more than, than that. Uh, they, they're, one of their main features is they have this internal and external segmentation with some segments modified to form a head. Uh, they form these parapodia, paired appendages, protostome development with trochophore larvae and spiral cleavage, uh, well-developed gills for respiration so that they can get oxygen from the water. 
They have muscular hearts for pumping blood to transport that oxygen. And the uh, blood stays within blood vessels, so it's called a closed circulatory system. A uh, complete digestive tract with a large coelom that serves as a hydrostatic skeleton. So there's some, some nice photos of those. So the annelids, again, Lophotrochozoa, another good example of those organisms.